Throughout A Song of Ice and Fire, Your Moments Raven continually has a speaking role in chapters based on the wall. Most of its speech is either a reaffirmation of something someone has just said, or a request for calm. It would be easy to dismiss the role of this raven in the story as just a quirky afterthought, but this bird surely has one of the highest number of lines of any non-POV character in the series. Given the sheer number of times it speaks, I think it's reasonable to assume that George R. R. Martin wouldn't have wasted so much page space on the musicals of this raven if the only standalone message we could take from it is that this bird really fucking likes eating corn. We don't know much about the raven's history, such as when and or how the old bear obtained him, but we have heard him described as old and having been Mormon's companion for long years. I figure if you're not willing to delve into some crack pottery, you wouldn't be watching a video about deciphering bird speech, so let's get straight into it. Norman's Raven is probably being skin changed into by blood written. Brynden Rivers is a very powerful skin changer, ever more so since he symbiosized himself with a tree. We also know he has a history of having a vast network of spies, and it's very probable that not all of his 1001 eyes are human. The raven seems to be very inquisitive and eager to soak up as much knowledge as possible as you would expect from an agent of blood raven. It is ever present in important Night's Watch business, perched on the desk or shoulder of Lord Commander Mormont and John after him. When Mormont gives Longclaw to John, the raven takes interest. It may even be reading the Lord Commander's letters. It's safe to say, if a skin changer did want to keep up to date with all the goings on at Castle Black, Moments Raven would be the ideal agent. Mr. Raymond describes Moments Raven as rare for its preference of fruit and corn over meat, and John acknowledges it to be clever. Exactly what Blood Raven may be trying to achieve by having a pair of eyes at Castle Black is uncertain. But the raven is more than just a pair of eyes, it also serves as a mouthpiece, and a very active one of that. Its speech may be the key to working out Blood Raven's goals, but at the moment we don't have much to go. It seems to encourage John to take a long claw when Joe Moment presents the sword to him, and appears to take an interest at the mention of Benjamin Star. It certainly seems that the word corn isn't always just a plea for food, but rather sometimes a general outburst when more specific words aren't available. When John encounters the white offal in Mormon's chambers, the raven loses its shit, endlessly screaming corn, corn, corn. It appears in this instance that the word corn is being repeated as a general warning or cry for help. Either that or the sight of the undead just makes the raven particularly hungry. But as well as the persistent warns of corn, the raven's speech takes on a rare manifestation here. It is in this crucial scene that we see one of the very few instances of the raven saying a word that isn't either corn or a repetition of a word somebody has just said. As John grabs an oil lamp, but before he shows any obvious intention to burn the white, moments raven cries, burn, 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 burn. Moments Raven also appears to support John in the election for Lord Commander, reappearing for the first time since Moments' death in the ballot kessel, then flying to John's shoulder. So for some reason, it looks like Blood Raven is trying to aid Jon Snow in his fight against the Whites, acquisition of Longclaw, and election as Lord Commander, which could suggest that maybe Bran is playing a part too. However, for the most part, I would attribute the raven's musings to Blood Raven. It is so in keeping with the thousand eyes and one maxim, and most of what it says makes more sense coming from Blood Raven than it would from Bran. Radio Westeros's podcast about Melisandre, which is excellent, and I shall link to it in the description, had a theory that Melisandre is the daughter of Blood Raven and Shiera Seastar, and perhaps when the raven says blood in her presence, that is Blood Raven recognising and acknowledging his kin. I'm not sure I buy into that specific genealogy myself, as Melisandre is probably far too old to be Blood Raven's daughter.
but she could still have some relation to Brenda Rose, or maybe blood just means something entirely different in this setting. But of all the Raven's seemingly autonomous outbursts, arguably the most interesting one comes late in A Dance with Dragons, where shortly after John awakes from a seemingly prophetic, or at least highly symbolic, dream of himself as a champion against the others, Moments Raven says, King, Snow, Jon Snow, Jon Snow. Jon even remarks that this is queer, not remembering the bird ever having said his full name before, although seeming not to make anything of the ostensibly spontaneous use of the word King. Why does the bird suddenly choose this moment to say Jon's full name for the first time? And perhaps more importantly, why the hell does it blur out the word King immediately beforehand? Is it anything to do with his dream? Did Bloodraven send that dream to John? Like Bran's free-eyed crow dreams? Who knows? So, in summary, don't just discard the words of Mormont's raven as unintelligible bird babble. It's probably Bloodraven speaking, possibly Bran, and some of it means, or will mean, something. If you want to know more, Moments Raven has been widely discussed all over Reddit and Westeros.org. I'll link to some discussions in the description. As far as I know, there's very little content about the Raven on YouTube, which is why I decided to have a crack at making this video. If you're new to A Song of Ice and Fire videos and want to check out more, there's a plethora of great content available on YouTube, far too many to name more, but I would strongly recommend checking out everything by Preston Jacobs, Alt X and the Don himself, Tony Teflon, over at Teflon TV. Please feel free to leave a comment on this video to let me know what you thought of it. Maybe I'll do some more in future. Cheers.